Hello guys, Winston here. One of the nice things about the Pocket NC if you're machining something with multiple end mills is the fact that it uses a tool holder system. That means the exact information about an end mill and its length offset can be physically preserved between tool changes, saving you from having to probe your z-axis every time. But by default, the only way to load an end mill in a tool holder is to mount it on the spindle first. You have to use the hex head screwdriver to halt the spindle's rotation while you tighten the collet nut. I'm not a big fan of doing it this way. I want to be able to load up tools more easily and also do so if the machine is in the middle of an operation. So I came up with a tool tightening fixture that would securely grip a tool holder and allow me to install end mills anytime, anywhere. The design is a cylindrical body that conforms to the profile of the Pocket NC's tool holder with pins that match the notches in the tool holder to prevent rotation. The entire part will be embedded in a wooden base that can be clamped or bolted to a tabletop. To save money, I decided to make the base out of maple and the pins from Rodstock. The pins need to be steel because they have a really small surface area on which to act. Wood or even aluminum would get dented and chewed up over time. To model this infusion was pretty straightforward. To start, I sketched up a cylindrical puck with holes to match the profile of the tool holder. The critical diameters were at the top and the bottom. You want to support the tool holder at the two furthest points possible for stability. I had two lobes that the steel dowels would be embedded in. These were left a little chunky to better dissipate the torque that would be passed through the pins. The cam was dead simple as far as Pocket NC programming was concerned. Adapt it from the top to clear as much as possible, true up the walls with contour operations, use 3 plus 2 machining to interpolate two holes for the pins, and do a 5 axis swarf to chamfer the edges. I made multiple versions of some of the contour toolpads so that I could creep up on critical dimensions like the diameters of the steel pins and tool holder profile. My maple stock was two pieces that had been glued together with some sanding done to ensure a flat face at the bottom. To mount it on my pocket and see, I first taped down a sacrificial MDF board to elevate my maple off the B-table. I would face off this piece so I would know exactly how thick it was. As an added benefit, it would show me where the center of the platform was. Then I taped down my maple stock. Adhesive work holding probably seems a little odd on a 5-axis machine, but this is just like any other CNC woodworking project as far as I'm concerned. Since my stock was 1.5 inches thick, I needed at least that much stick out from my tool holder, preferably a couple millimeters extra to ensure the collet nut wouldn't crash into the stock. But the standard length tool holder wasn't going to cut it, it was too short. So I was using the extended reach tool holder which meant the pucker factor during tool length probing was exceptionally high. I only had a couple millimeters to spare. Once that was out of the way, I began clearing away my stock. I kept an onion skin until the very last contouring operation. This kept the excess stock from flying off prematurely. With an eighth inch end mill, I added in all the smaller details. I had to call upon some of the earlier toolpads I'd reserved for incrementally increasing the clearances of some of my holes. As designed and cut, my fixture was just a little bit too snug. After that, everything fit like a glove so I unmounted my piece and got to work on a base. This was just a simple rectangular block that the tool tightening fixture would sit in. I added some holes into the model in case I wanted to bolt through it. Since this wouldn't fit on my pocket NC, I cut it out on my Shaboko. The problem with this is that the calibration of the Shapeoko is slightly different than that of the Pocket NC. It's a less precise machine. So even though I programmed it to cut a 2 inch diameter pocket, it wasn't actually 2.000 inches in diameter. It was a couple thou undersized. I created additional toolpads that were incrementally larger to creep up on a snug fit with a Pocket NC machine tool fixture, which by the way was also not 2.000 inches in diameter. It was a couple thou oversized both classic symptoms of deflection in climb milling applications. To install the locking pins in my tool holder holder, I initially tried to use E6000 since it's more viscous, but even after 24 hours of cure time, I wasn't satisfied with how secure they felt. So then I resorted to using CA glue to lock in my pins, and that was almost a mistake. The design I made requires the pins to be inserted just deep enough to lock the tool holder's rotation without impeding its insertion or removal. I cut these pins by hand and there was no way to determine how deep was deep enough without physically referencing the tool holder. So I globbed on some CA glue, inserted a pin, and tried to get it to set just right. 
what I didn't realize was just how runny my crazy glue was. It seeped out of the hole and into places it shouldn't have. I got CA glue on my tool holder and almost glued my fingers to the fixture. After some admittedly sloppy adjustments, I finally got the pins in place, but because I had pressed them against my pocket NC tool holder as a reference, they were a bit tight. I used a small set of files to widen up the spacing to allow for easier installation of the tool holder. I also had to use my belt sander to get the pins flush with the outer diameter of my fixture. But visually, I'm a big fan of seeing steel embedded seamlessly into wood. Both the standard and extended length tool holders are held securely while tightening collet nuts, so as far as I'm concerned, this is mission accomplished. That being said, here's where I do things differently. The worst part of this project was getting my pin seated in exactly the right spot. While using a thicker CA glue with a longer set time would have saved me a bit of drama, the final adjustment of the pins to perfectly match the tool holder was the most important part. Off camera, I spent a good amount of time shaping the pins to allow the tool holders to slide in and out with ease. But these pins are mild steel. I could very easily have used the pocket NC to trim the inner profile to match the notches in the tool holder and remove any excess length sticking outside the fixer's profile. That would have been my preferred solution had my workpiece been attached more securely than with tape. Alternately, I could model some physical stops into the tool setting fixture so that the pins can only be inserted to the proper depth. Whatever. This project was still good for some 5-axis practice, and I got something practical out of it, which is what I was really after. So now I can load up my tools quickly, even while the pocket NC is running in the background. This will be perfect for when I start looking into doing production type runs of parts that require multiple tool changes like, oh, I don't know, a SpaceX Crew Dragon bottle opener? I'm sure I'll think of something, but in the meantime, I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you in a couple weeks with another CNC-related project video.